Welcome once again to the Hour Show on Andy D TV. Today we have in the studio a prominent man who actually led the coup of 1981 and brought former President Rollins to power. Um, in our previous segment, we spoke to Nana Aduma Kunyamiche. He mentioned various names, including the said man that we have in the studio. I was privileged to meet him in Ghana, and we spoke about his book, Rollins, Murder, and Lies. In his book, he narrates how the whole coup was orchestrated, the atrocities that were committed, and also the, the murder of the three judges, including the former major. All the way from Oslo, Norway, we welcome Mr. Matthew Adebuka to the studio. Thank you. Mr. Adebuka, welcome. Thank you very much. Uh, we're going to go through uh, various uh, aspects of your book, Rollins, Murder, and His Lies. Yes. How old were you when you joined the armed forces in Ghana? Uh, I was about 15 years of age. You know, uh, at that time, uh, the boys' company or junior leaders, uh, we are recruited when uh, we are very young. And then we have a, a, a three-year course uh, in uh, the military academy or armed forces university. So by the time you turn 18 years, you become a regular soldier. Okay. And that is why it was uh, at a tender age. All right. At what point um, did you meet Rollins? When I joined the, my mother unit, which is uh, the Reiki Regiment, Amu Re Reconnaissance Regiment at okay. Gwanda Barras. Okay. We used to ride horse together. All right. Yeah. And in your book, you actually narrated a story where Rollins took some white women into the bushes, and when he came back, yes, uh, he actually called you by a nickname. Yes, young. Uh, young. young. Yeah, because of my age. Yeah. <laughs> you know, we used to ride these uh, horses uh, because it's part of our training. All right. When you join the Amoreke Regiment, either you are a gunner, you'll be trained as a signaler or you'll be trained uh, as a driver. And the last one is uh, equitation, which is horse riding. Okay. So you have to rotate uh, the whole four. Right. And then you are mastered. Either you're a gunner signaler or a driver signaler. Okay. But the equitation is for ceremonial purposes, right. as you can see in the case of uh, uh, Sif June or Prince Harry, their wedding, those riding the horses. And okay, okay. So we're trained to do that. Since you were actually trained in a civil manner, yes. in a way to defend your country, yes. why the revolution in 1981? Uh, it's a long story, but uh, let's... Well, let's summarize it let's in a way that we can. Yeah. Today, we're going to go through the, the hurdles because we had uh, the, the, the opportunity to meet uh, Nana Aduma Kunyamiche. Yes. In his story, um, a lot of people um, criticized you um, for being a criminal probably leading a revolution that was not necessary. Uh, do you agree with those sentiments? No, I, I do agree because, uh, like I said, no, uh, there were so many factors that uh, narrowed in into it, and eventually I was caught at the last minute. Why the revolution of 1981? Why did you, because before even Rollins uh, met you, um, he was actually suspended from the army, wasn't he? That's right. Uh, so you actually planned the coup with only three men? Yes. Why? We're ten, Why? actually. Because, uh, as I said, my relationship with Rollins dated back from the time I entered uh, the army as a horse rider. Right. He used to come there with some uh, diplomatic uh, corps. Uh, I mean, yeah. And this woman, Najoviak, he was the instructor. And then we have a Fopwa, and then we have a lot of them. He was also playing polo. So we became acquainted there. And uh, the 4th of June, actually, he came to airport. I was stationed there. And then he used to come and then uh, talk to me, Ousu Bempa, and uh, the rest about how things are going, not going well. So by the time the 15th May came, they suspected me and they uh, sent me on leave that uh, I was always having dealings with him. And then when the 4th June came, he called me to be his uh, bodyguard. So I was actually a leading uh, escort in it where he was going. Uh, okay, let, let's, let's go back. 31st yes. December, yes. 1981. Yes. 
Rollins, probably in your book, I'll, I'll quote you in your own yeah. book. In your book, you narrated that Rollins yes. had actually told you yes. that uh, Lehman, who was the former president Lehman, yeah. uh, was involved in the whole process and he warned you guys to take him off power yeah. and reinstate him back again. That is true. And you believed it. Uh, to uh, understand, because uh, at that time, uh, taking into consideration my age, and then uh, the fact that uh, I went to the Achimota Forest with uh, Akatapore, mm -hmm. who was a member. Mm -hmm. uh, Chris Bukare, a team, was there. Uh, Lidu Jiwa was there. So he convinced all of you? Yes, because when we were at the uh, Achimota Forest, uh, a kind of uh, car, a limousine, yeah. came and passed into the forest. And then Akatapore and uh, Rollins and our team excused us, and they went inside. So. Myself, Jiwa, uh, Albert Bafa, uh, Ajowiak, Jack Mahoney, we were waiting. And then when they came back, they mm. managed to convince us that they went and met Dr. Lehman. And he was seeing that uh, his own party people are making it difficult for him to govern. I, you heard that story that time, Adai Marko and the rest, sending him to court. They say Moro Egala brought him from nowhere and uh, put him on, uh, uh, I mean... Uh, in power. In power. Right. And then there were these old guys and old, uh, new guys fighting among themselves. So uh, the party itself contributed to the coup. That is what I want to say. They, Did you believe it or you were saying in actual sense that they actually contributed to the coup? Yeah, by the way, I was explaining that uh, they, they were making it difficult for him to govern. I didn't see the man, but this is what these three gentlemen came and told me. Which is Akatapori. Yes, and Chris Atim, and including Rollins, which they are still alive. If they are very sincere and honest with themselves, uh, they will come up and either uh, verify what I'm saying or substantiate it or deny it. But this is what happened. So we were to take power and give it back to the man. And so on that day... You Did it make sense to you? It didn't make sense, but uh, from the way they narrated it, that uh, uh, he was just a figurehead. And uh, why did you believe them? Well, I, I believe it because uh, at that time, like I said, you no, know, I was so close to Rollins that uh, whatever he said, I believe him. Was it not on the point that he actually misled you to believe that the Fantis wanted to take over the government of Liman, and you were not now, and therefore you bought the idea? Yes. And then other factors like uh, uh, they tried to poison the Moro Gala, you see. So it was like uh, the, their party, Le Mans party, was crumbling. And so the, that is exactly the only way to salvage him. Were you fighting in the interest of where you were coming from uh, on that basis? Were you just fighting to defend the ethnicity of Le Mans being the, the, the northern power in the country? Were yeah, you fighting to defend that? To, to an extent, because uh, it was uh, not easy for a northerner to become a president at that time. We were, uh, we were used as uh, underdogs. So they, this was the first time a northerner was on top. And so we, the northerners, thought that we could uh, protect him. And so I was convinced that, no, we have to be able to defend our own kind. That is your own justification. Yes, that is my opinion. Tell me, when you were in the process of taking over, okay, a lot of people were killed, um, your own comrades, your own friends, yes, families, children. Yeah. Um, how do you explain that to them when you should uh, be protecting their interest? Well, uh, the problem is that uh, in war, you have a You call it war. Uh, well, because it, it was uh, when going to take it by force. Okay. And in the process, uh, there must be some kind of casualties. So it could be from any side. Our Is side, that how you guys are trained in the army? No, we're not trained. It was uh, uh, at that time uh, what you call youthful exuberant because the 4th June had just uh, died out. And because it was uh, just three months. Uh, we saw it that, no, this is uh, what we call uh, a way forward for the government to move. In addition, in addition to this uh, northern factor, 
we were thinking that it was only Rawlings who could pro uh, protect uh, Le Mans' interest because uh, he made it possible for Le Mans to, uh, I mean, uh, win because during the election, they made sure that it was f uh, fair. Mm -hmm. Otherwise, the Victor Wusu party were going to rig it. Okay. According to Rawlings, who told me that story. Okay. Uh -huh. And then, in addition to that, when he was handing over to Le Mans, if you heard, he said that your government is under probation, you see? And so he was still going to Le Mans and, uh, I mean, listening to him, and Le Mans was taking his advice until the time that uh, Fuller Le Mans uh, saw that he was playing games. And that is the time that uh, I'm sure uh, he's, he was not giving uh, Rollins a face. Uh, but then Rollins came to tell us also about uh, other things that, uh, in a way, we, he couldn't complete the revolution because he went to Cuba. And when he came back, I was there. He and Boachijan, they nearly exchanged fire. Boachijan body gas and Rollins body gas at uh, Arakan Barras. Because Boachijan and his uh, uh, colleagues, Batch and Four, Mensa, Bediman, they, they have already signed the, the handing over. And Rollins was not happy. So t today, I would say that we were being uh, manipulated to join. Were you, were you under any, any influence of drugs or alcohol or anything at that point? Because it baffles me to understand why a boy of such young age would want to now get into such a huge uh, revolution. Yeah, that but you didn't even know you were going to come back. No, because we were, Rollins was giving us this kind of socialist books. In, 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 he was giving you socialist books. Okay. To read. In, in your book, uh, you, you made mention that his last words to you before you actually started it was that, gentlemen, from now, you are all going to prosper. Did yes. you believe that? Yeah, I believe him. Were you coming from a very poor background? Uh, no, but uh, at least uh, I didn't get uh, those uh, privileges that uh, the... I mean, under normal circumstances, uh, uh, we, we could have gotten. W what privileges were you looking for? Uh, a car loan, for instance. You had a Peugeot? No, that, that was after the revolution. Revolution. Yes. So that is all you were looking for, a car? Yeah, to also drive and then uh, uh, what we call uh, uh, food, clothing, and shelter. <laughs> which uh, I, I, I quite remember he flew you over. Uh, Nima, yes, uh, and uh, airport residential, and made you know, reference, reference that to, uh, yeah, the workers. I should just look at Nima, and they were just from the air there. They were just dotted uh, hats, and then uh, yeah. Why did he just get interest in you? Uh, because uh, we were very very closer, and he saw that I was uh, the one who was. Uh, having influence on the boys. We, we normally play football every weekend, basketball, and this horse riding. And uh, I was not married at that time, so when we finish, we organize some food at my house, and all of them come to eat. So he knew that uh, from me, I could be able to recruit the boys. You were also very particular in your book about how you were good in shooting. Yes, I was a maxman at that time. You speak profoundly about it. Do you take delight in killing? Uh, no, not killing, but uh, as a soldier, we were trained to kill. But uh, not in peacetime, but uh, when there is a, a danger. So that is our profession. Just like uh, uh, the one who is selling a casket. He doesn't want somebody to die, but uh, that is his profession. 1982 came into effect. Yes. A lot of people were killed. Yes. A lot of people, including your own friends. Yes. At some point, you got to understand that Rollins had lied to you almost at the failure of that revolution. Yes. You discovered. You discovered. He did. Yes. He misled you. Yes. Why did you still carry on with the act? Well, uh, w when uh, we discovered that he lied to us, we were trying to topple him which I said in the book, uh, 28th. But then uh, it was not uh, a, 
exactly to discontinue the revolution. Because the revolution was divided into two fronts when he came. First, when he didn't hand over to Le Mans, I took a quarrel with him. Right, and you arrested him? Uh, uh, that is uh, later on. Yeah. Yes, when he, he wanted to run away during the fight. Exactly. Uh -huh. And then I was the one who led the whole show to the broadcasting house and then took over power. He was then at station at the Sankara mm. Square. You know, what, what I, I still am failing to understand is he misled you. Yes. He told you a whole lot of lies. Yes. You discovered it. Yes. Listen, this man is trying to get the very man I'm fighting for to stay in power out of power. You still carried on with the action and still escorted him to broadcasting to, 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 to make that announcement. Why did you still support him from that point? Why didn't he remain, even though your colleagues pleaded on his behalf, thinking you were going to kill him? Why did you still support him? Because uh, I thought that maybe, uh, in a way, he may change his mind and then release in Le Mans. In, in the sense? sense that Le Mans, if you realize, uh, Le Mans didn't want to run away when the 31st came. And uh, Rollins' first words were, I made him to, that, what about Le Mans? Because when I took the broadcasting house, then I signaled that they should bring the prisoner. But then uh, I made you to arrest him and lock him in the ammo car. And then when I say he should come, I asked him, okay, he should uh, tell the nation about Le Mans. So his first words were that nobody to Amen. touch Le Mans' hair. Yeah. And so if you realize Le Mans didn't want to go out, because that is where I believe that in a way he had a knowledge. It was when Captain Chikata came into the scene that his handlers advised him to leave the country. And when he was going, he was arrested somewhere at uh, this thing, Eastern region, okay. some barrier there. Because you no, never made mention of what happened to him in your book. Yes, okay. but that is exactly what happened. So the man, when they arrested him, uh, Rollins didn't do anything to him. So I asked him, what about Ro uh, Le Mans? You said this and that and that. He said, oh, if he, hadn't, if he didn't have anything to hide, uh, why should he run away or attempt to run away? So we should leave him. So from that point, uh, I saw that, no, this thing will not work. But still, uh, people like Chris Atim, Akatapore, Kwesia uh, Du and all those uh, boys said that uh, if we are able to, I mean, bring these uh, resources together, we mm. have gold, we have diamond, we have bauxite, we have manganese, we have timber, whatever it is, arid land or, yeah, we'll be able to, I mean, uh, bring all this kind of... Uh, Progress or paradise were hoping, talking, and, hoping. Uh -huh. and uh, unfortunately we, we we also bought into that because if you realize uh, the revolution at that time was divided into two Rollins and his group going to the IMF and the socialist boys so we were hanging with the socialist boys to see whether still uh, we can do something about uh, the whole thing because it was Ghana first. And so if... Yeah, are you sure it was Ghana first? Yes, at the, after that, when uh, this thing didn't work, because the students all left the schools and they were carrying cocoa. The workers, even uh, President Kufo, he joined the revolution, Bar Association. Everybody was interested, Father Damoa and the rest. Everybody thought that, yes, okay, whatever the situation was, let's come together and see whether we can uh, propel this nation. And so things were going on all right until the judges matter came. And that is where uh, the front was divided. What happened to those judges? Uh, those judges were picked up under the instruction of Rollins. I must be frank. There was a meeting and almost uh, all the members knew about that they were going to be arrested. Except Brigadier Nunu Mensa at that time. Chris Atim and Father Damois. The rest all knew that they were going to be arrested. But as for the killing, I cannot say 
it is Rollins or it is another person who did it, or the wife. But Why then the keys, yeah. the keys to the car was given to Amatekwe by Rollins' wife. And the car was stationed at Rollins' house two weeks before the operation. So what evidence do you need again? And they were pick up. A few time we know that nobody goes out unless you are uh, these paramilitary people, ambulances, or you have a KPU pass. Right. C coming to talk, uh, uh, to think, you know, you talking about the four judges, uh, there are names. Three of, and one. Uh, three, three Plus judges. Plus the retired and major. Then retired major. Jano, yeah. Jandu, yes. Seko, Senya, Amatekwe. Uh, uh, and America. The, and America. Yes. Uh, who later escaped into exile. Yes. They were used as scapegoats. Yes. Um, but in, in your book, you also made mention that there was a news that came to Rollins yeah. where he popped champagne. Yes. And started. Is that what triggered you to think he was involved in the killing? Yes, I believe it. Because what I saw was that Brigadier Nunu Mensa, he told Amate Kwe to go and release them. And then he said that he has dispatched them. You see? Why were they killed? Uh, they were killed because, like I said, this indemnity clause thing. After 4th June, uh, Rollins and his uh, group said that nobody should appeal the sentences of the AFRC convicts. And this appeal court judges, three of them said, no, this was wrong. So let us look at it again. Even Dr. Lehman was afraid to open that case. And then, when they look at it, some of them were freed or some of them were given lower sentences. And that made them to be offended that, hey, we have made a law. Why do you people go and do it? And that is why. As for the major, the major was uh, the one who was uh, personnel. He was working at Jiho, where Matekwe was working at Tema, Jiho. Mm -hmm. And he was a, a pick-up because when Amatekwe and the workers marched from Tema to Parliament House to ten tables and they ate their lunch, you remember that the, a board of inquiry was formed. And that major was sitting on the board. And he recommended that Amatekwe and some of them should be sacked. And so Amatekwe, they added him. So it was this AFRC convicts which were... Uh, uh, that was the main problem, and that's why they caught them. But uh, in addition to that, other people too were going to be picked up. They were about 250. So Fly Left Nordoy was the security coordinator stationed at uh, State House. I went to him in Panama. We talked about it. He said, no, no. This was not the meaning. They were mm. going to be picked and then locked, not to be killed. But they asked to the kill, and I'm saying that it came from Rollins and the wife, you see, particularly, because he popped champagne. Do you pop champagne to celebrate, or do you pop champagne when somebody, you are mourning somebody, the death of somebody? They come and tell you that they have despised them, meaning they have killed them. Then you go and bring champagne, a pasho, and start drinking. What does that signal? The wife was wearing white, white, you see? All this thing came to light. So that is how I can conclude it, that they were killed because uh, uh, Rollins and his wife wanted to avenge why they have uh, given a law and then it was uh, tampered with. During all the time you thought you were going to prosper, Rollins misled you, according to yourself. Yeah. And, your, and the rest, including Nakatapori. Yeah. You had him on numerous occasions where you could have taken him out of government. Yeah. Why did you still allow him to stay in? Uh, by, by also listening to Akatapur, why didn't you turn him over? Why didn't you say, we want a new, probably new government to be formed, get Rollins out of there, and form a new government? Why, why couldn't? Because at one point, you bashed into the state house, met Rollins, and he was shivering, according to yourself. Yeah. However, the castle. However, and you made mention to is it Awuni? Yeah, Baba Awuni, Captain and, and Baba Awuni. You, you told him you could have been the head of state. Did yes. you believe you could have been the head of state? Yes, I could have been the head of state, even 
I took over the broker's in house. Remember? Right. And then I signaled that they should bring him. So I could have announced for myself. But to be very sincere and honest with you, I didn't know what to do. You see, if but you I... Had, you had um, uh, uh, Dumakunya Mitchell with you. You had so many people with you. Why, why couldn't you probably... Because the man had lied to you. Yes. He had misled you into this chaotic situation where people were killed. That is Your true. own friends, you saw yes, them. Yes, yes. Including innocent people. That is true. Why didn't you rethink the situation? Yeah, at a point we were trying to do it, and then uh, it didn't work. 28 uh, October, we were trying to shoot him up. And then one guy who is still with them now, uh, Rollins was bringing some of the gold from uh, Obuasi. And then we put the cascavel and mounted it towards uh, the helicopter. So one of the boys who uh, was with us, uh, he told another guy, and then the two Rollins, and Rollins just flew the helicopter. When he was coming, he flew it and went and landed at uh, Air Force. So that was one point. Then another point, to, we try again. We try so, several times to get him. But you see, with this thing, if you do it with others, it, it will leak. <laughs> I could have gone to do it myself or like uh, two, three people. But immediately you broaden it, it will get leaked. That is the unfortunate thing about these things. In, in your book, you also made it quite obvious. You were the most feared person by Rollins yes. in the army. Is yeah. that the case? Yeah, that is the case because I was the person who drove him from uh, uh, this thing, 37 military hospital. How he came to power, it was uh, the later uh, Atta, Atta, the mortuary man. Mm -hmm. That is where Rollins met me, me and Bafa, and I took him in an ambulance. We were going through uh, Elwak, the ambulance make, uh, put the shiren, ping pong, ping pong, ping pong. Then when we reached the Reiki regiment, the MRS, then we diverted to where the electricity is. And then I put him in my room. So from my room, I was able to organize the rest to the assembly area. An assembly area is where troops assemble to give orders. And I, so I sent him there, and the rest came and joined. And I was the one who led him to seize the ammo cars. And I was the one who was the first person to release the shot, you see? And I was the one who led him to go and then uh, see whether we can take Le Mans to the broker's scene to announce. Unfortunately, when we reached there, Le Mans has gone, you see? So he feared me because... I didn't just uh, plan it, but I was active in everything. Are you taking all the glory? No, I can't do it without my friends. Actually, Aduma Kunyamiche, as you said, there were Eric Asare, there were Brahma, uh, there was uh, Baba Kankani, Akadema, there were Ato Usu, Adam Sake. Or the Reiki boys, we did it. You are quite good in remembering all those people. Yes, yes. Instances where you were ordered to kill a lot. Um, I remember in your book you were supposed to lie people down and run them over by their waist yes. with an ammo car. You refused to do that. Yes. Why didn't you do the same thing for a lot of people that were killed? Why didn't you put them in prison or something else? Why did you kill so many people? Well, uh, to be very sincere with you, uh, during the shooting, I yeah. cannot say I didn't kill because it's either you kill or be killed during the fighting. Because don't forget that uh, it wasn't just a, a ride over. There was a lot of resistance. First came uh, the military intelligence. They were following us just like that, trailing us. And then uh, from time to time, we stopped there and deflate their cars and collect their keys. Mm. Then... It came uh, other units uh, like uh, engineer regiment, mm -hmm. to, uh, and then uh, we went to brigade. When uh, Major Nantoma, the late, mm -hmm. he was firing the cargo staff himself, and then we went to mass, and uh, this uh, Kenne Jukonuku he uh, deployed the military academy. Uh, this thing, the, those who were who were under training. So we had it very, very tough. And so in that instant, I can't say I didn't kill anybody because if you don't shoot, you'll be shot. But after the revolution, I can swear to my 
Numbri God, that I've never killed anybody with uh, the raffle, apart from the, the fighting. Yes, but uh, there were other killings. People settled scores. And Rollins himself, he settled scores, which when, we know. When, when you last met Rollins, um, uh, before the RNT, yeah. um, you... Um, the National Reconciliation. Yeah, before, before the Reconciliation meeting. Before that, I'm talking about this yes. after the revolution. You met him. Yeah, I met and him. It, and you were incarcerated again. You got arrested. Yes. And the whole army stood behind you. Yes. For you to be released or else... They will, they, they will move. Exactly. Why didn't you allow them to do that? Well, uh, it was... Uh, one uh, Captain Babawuni, as I said, mm -hmm. and then one Major Yache. Mm -hmm. because uh, they were not nice. They thought that they, they could talk us down. So they took me uh, with helicopter. Uh, it was this man, uh, Brigadier Quinu, and the rest. Sent me to them. Colonel Yachi, he was a uh, Fabian commander. And so he appealed to me that uh, uh, it is better for us to talk rather than uh, take over, because everybody was ready. So when I went there, I wanted to move them and Captain Baba Wuni. And that is why last minute, Captain Baba Wuni followed me. If he and the Colonel, they follow us to the, the prison because they have let us down. Even when they were coming to arrest us, we wanted to, sh to fight. And then, I mean, including uh, Saya Akatapore, he was saying we should stop. We were ready. Even Baba Wuni was ready that we should fight when they were coming. We deployed ready. So th that is what happened. And I couldn't do otherwise because I was uh, always... The problem with me, I like discipline, so I try to listen to my superiors. What has happened to Akatapori now? Akatapori, the last time I met him, uh, he was in Ghana. He's uh, maintaining a low profile because uh, he doesn't want to, uh, I mean, uh, bring, uh, he wants uh, sleeping dogs to lie. But uh, I told him that unless this matter is uh, brought up, we, we cannot uh, put it under the carpet. Because the Nordness, uh, they don't want to see some of us. It was recently through a, a, this thing, a nephew I'm living with, he is bringing me towards the northern. When they see me, they want to scheme me why I have to overthrow my own brother. So I'm privileged to be here to explain that I didn't start it, but I was uh, brainwashed. And when I saw it was too late, I wanted to take action. And that is why, since from there, I never stopped fighting. I was in there on uh, June 19th. I was the guy who started planning it before we went to the broadcasting house and then uh, things fucked up. And when we went to exile, I came back again with Ali Dujiwa them mm -hmm. and they were caught. Okay, on whose orders was Lieutenant Asari executed? It was uh, Rollins. On Rollins? Is it? Yeah. Why the, I mean, what I still cannot contend is the killings. Why? He's in power already. People have surrendered. You've taken over. You've formed government that was ruling. Why the ongoing killing? Well, uh, on the part of Lieutenant Asari, they were actually coming to take over at the broadcasting. Okay. He came with the, uh, that uh, Rollins say he should come and take over the command. And so the boys there, Ajekum, Awene, Aduma Kunyamiche was there. And then uh, America was there, Matthias Kujo, and the rest were, they arrested him. That how? Who were the people who brought about the revolution with Father Buga and the rest? And so we are guarding here. Rollins said you should come, and he didn't tell us. So they escorted him to the uh, Gonda Barras. And then they said, did you ask this officer to come and take over? So Rollins asked him, officer, am I the one who asked you to go and take over? He was there. I say, did I ask you to go and take over power at the broker's house, command? And so when the officer didn't talk, he said, people like this. 
What do you do with them? Take him away. By that, it translates to mean that they should go and kill him. Who killed him? Well, it was... Uh, <laughs> it's difficult. Did you kill him? No, I didn't. Who killed him? It was uh, Ali Dujiwa. But uh, he's also dead now. Yeah. Are, are we trying to put every sort of... Uh, <laughs> dead people on the, on the dead. Dead people don't looks, talk. <laughs> so let's uh, assume that he did it. <laughs> <laughs> let's assume that he did it. Yes. Okay. All right. That's fine. In this uh, humbling situation where you have uh, so much regret uh, for people that were killed during your time uh, at the reconciliation meeting, you 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 have come out quite strongly and apologetic. Yes, because I, I, I believe that uh, I have so much blood in my hands. You see? Can you see blood? De uh, definitely. And is that why most of you guys tend to be pastors? and Yes, uh, a lot of them. Yeah, and a lot of them. Uh, because uh, uh, there's no day without you thinking about it. Because uh, it wasn't meant to be like that. It was meant to be... Uh, uh, paradise on earth, like an e Ethiopia. The, talking about the resources we have, gold, diamond, bauxite, cocoa, and all those things. And then it was a question of mismanagement. So if these uh, resources are properly harnessed, we would have come out to... Uh, but the whole thing was a, a, a kind of hoax. Rollins and the wife and uh, his friends, they came to make money. As you can see today, one of the Forbes the books, they say that he's one of the richest people. And then you ask yourself, people who took loan with 50 cities, and you line them up and shoot, Makole women, our mothers, two things of milk, geisha, plicha, that time they called them essential commodities, were short, and today, how many houses do you have? How many cars? Talk about in Sawam uh, Canary. Uh, talk about rubber plantation. Talk about the Black Star Line. And talk about uh, what and what and what. Uh, La Palm Beach and what we don't know. Was it worth it that we took part? And that makes us to be what we are. You see that uh, I am uh, very, very strong now because I was able to go to the National Reconciliation and I told the Ghanaians the truth, the same thing I'm telling you. And I asked them that I asked for forgiveness. And uh, alternatively, any punishment that they deem it that I should face, I was prepared. They clap hands for me because I said the truth. I'm sorry. You can't bring these people back. What has been done has been done. Was it televised? Yes, it was televised. Have you at any point met any of the civil people? I mean, your friends that you killed in the process, their family? Have, have you been able to meet some of them? Have yes, you... I, I met, I met uh, quite a few. And uh, whatever I had, I shared with them. And I said that, uh, I even said that uh, in future, if I'm able to put this transport business, whatever I get, we share it together. Because that is the only way I can reconcile. I cannot bring back uh, people who have lost uh, their lives during my action directly or indirectly. Uh, that is why I came to the NRC, to tell the truth to the whole world and ask for forgiveness. So. If they were to say that I hung him, I would have been prepared to be hanged. Because, uh, yes, that is it. Do you think you should face any punishment for... Because you tend to still know, accept that mere apology to the people is enough. Well, if uh, the people of Ghana deem it fit, after me coming to the National Reconciliation and narrating all these things, if they still think that that is not enough, and they want to punish me, 
I'm ready to face any punishment. It's, it's a whole lot. And I, I think I'm, I'm quite um, honored to have met you. And a lot of people that have different perception about you in terms of you being a criminal, in terms of you, you know, killing willingly and in taking delight. Um, you have the privilege to now tell them what you really think and what a good man you are. Yes, thank you very much. I, like I said, no, I have never killed anybody physically like that without any cause. But uh, in battle, either you kill or be killed. And so I cannot say I didn't kill anybody during the fighting. On our side, we lost people during the assault to the brokers and uh, other places. And then the enemy to the lost people. But I take responsibility because I was the one uh, who Akatapore talked to. And then I recruited the people for Rollins and Rollins himself. And I was the one who released the first shot. So I take full responsibility. And so when the National Reconciliation came, I went there willingly and then I stood before them. It was, I even wanted to meet Rollins. I met Chikata, and when Chikata was trying to play game, he brought a complete lawyer over Asamoah, and Asamoah was not there. Asamoah came later on, he was uh, the workers at uh, this thing, Tema, this uh, defense company, he was a coordinator, and they rejected him. And when he came, he was wearing uh, Wellington boots with some uh, Chanchamba car, the Kwame Nkrumah type, no, Kurum Burum. I was the one who marched him to Rollins. And then uh, you are coming to tell me that you are coming to defend Kojo Chikata. And I know how Kojo Chikata's car was stolen and bent. I can even, I know the people who did the action. So <laughs> what are you coming to say? And when I brought that, he said, my Lord, I rest my case, no more questions. Because if they wanted, I would have uh, revealed the whole moon. Moon, okay. You see? And Rollins, he, he didn't come. I was there till I left. He never came because if he came, the same moon I reveal. Because I know more than. How do you feel when he actually denied you entirely? And he's not done it just at the reconciliation meeting. He's done it on several platforms. Yes. He, said he uh, does not know you. Yeah, he said he does not know me because he's a coward. That's what I can say. After me doing all these things for him, he knows very well that uh, when he meets me, I would just tell him certain things that uh, he would like the earth to open and he would enter and bury himself. And he hasn't stopped there. You see, if I were the only person that uh, you can say that he has a uh, use or I was being uh, deceived, then it would be okay. You saw what happened to Aka mm -hmm. and you saw what happened to President Kufo. Mm -hmm. he, up to today, he has started it. He actually sent meals to his grave. You see? And when Muhammad that is came. a serious talk. Yes, he sent meals to his grave. How, what do you mean by that? Since uh, he wanted uh, the wife to stand, and when they went to Sunyani, the wife didn't win. Since then, he has never stopped uh, condemning meals. He insulted meals everywhere, used uh, opportunity. The man was sick, and then he was doing his best for the country. And Rollins was on him, on him till he died. And during the condolence, you saw what he said it was an omen for him to die. It was God sent that Mills died uh, early. Otherwise, the party wouldn't have been what. How can uh, somebody say something like that, a former head of state? That's why I say he sent him to the grave. Should Rollins ever, uh, should Rollins have ever given you those? Uh, ornaments, the gold, the diamond, because he seemed to be very particular about that. Even when you were in the broadcasting uh, station, would you have been so much against him and his family? Actually, uh, that was, uh, when he said we're going to prosper, I, I wasn't thinking about uh, me as a person, but the whole country. Because during that time, he, he, some of these uh, ideas they were giving us, Chachu, Atwostin, and the rest, they made us to believe that we have gold, we have diamond, we have bauxite, we have manganese, we have uh, cocoa. 
and we have arable land. And it was only because of mismanagement. That is why we are where we are. And so if we manage these resources properly, then we will get a situation whereby it will be like a here, whereby there will be a welfare state, and then the rich will uh, also be there, pay taxes, and it will be a channel for like the private sector. And what that means is that there will be food, clothing, and shelter, not uh, forgetting about education, which is uh, vital for development, and health, you see? Uh, housing for the workers, not that you give uh, the workers money, but create conditions whereby people will not be coming here for jobs, you see? That is how I was thinking, but not individually. Because if you look at uh, the country, it has been like that from uh, day one. Uh, I, I didn't know about Kwame Nkrumah because I was very young. But uh, much as some of the people, the head of states were trying to do the right thing, people around them are just jostling. It's happening even uh, right now, as you can hear news. So if, if we have that mentality, we, we are not going forward. I'm not saying that here there's no corruption. But uh, they create the structures whereby you cannot steal for one or two years. You'll be fished out, you see. In no way, for example, the institutions are there. So if you try to drivel them, you can do it for some time. But they will bring you out. And that is what it, I was it, thinking. Yeah, but you know, in as much as you talk so uh, profoundly about others, um, Rollins uh, um, is quite a, a prominent man who is being hailed all across the country by so many. I mean, you can agree and disagree with me that NDC will not probably come to power without the support of him. So why, why is it that with all the sort of atrocities he's committed, the things you allege that he's done, he still get the support? Uh, one uh, is because the way he was able to eliminate we those who brought him to power, not only me, it includes Akatapore, it includes Chris Atim, it includes everybody who started with him. He eliminated everybody. And so he was the Napoleon. And number two, those people, it a one to now, they were not born. A lot of the voting population, it's about 35 years. Some of them have got children. They didn't know the story. So I'm now saying that he's popular because all these people grew up to know it's only Rollins. Until some of us come out, like Nana, like me, saying that, no, wait, he's what he is because he was able to silence all dissent. In Rollins' time, what Anas is doing, he can't do it. And what uh, all those people are doing, they can't bring all these things out. And so that is where he was able to be what he is. And the second thing is that he was able to pitch one tribe against another. You see, he's a good manipulator. And he hasn't stopped up to now. You can see it for yourself. How is he doing it now? He's doing it because he was able to do it to Aka. He was able to do it to Kufo. And Kufo didn't give him a chance. When Kufo won, in fact, he said that we shouldn't come, the exiles. Can you imagine? When Kufo brought Suleimana, Yaya Muadini, and uh, Major Sita, he was annoying. That was the beginning. So up to today, nobody has ever given us amnesty, let alone compensation. All those who went to exile. And I'm saying that the military intelligence, and I can say it, that day they did a very wonderful job. They were following us from beginning to the end. And these people were doing their job fighting for the state. And you came up and locked them for three years. And no government has come to sincerely say that these people, let's look at it again. You, you talk about amnesty and compensation. Do you really believe you should be compensated? For me, if they don't give me, it's okay. But uh, the soldiers who uh, were casualties uh, because of us, they should look at it properly, you see? Can you name some of them? Yes, uh, the military intelligence. 
and also some of the, those people who uh, went to exile because uh, they arrested me and then uh, they took to arms. All of them were locked, all the, half of the Reiki regiment because of me. And all these people, they haven't got composition. So if they minus me and then they give them composition, I'll be very, very happy because they didn't do nothing, you see. Don't forget that uh, Kachuchikata, uh, Kojuchikata and Rollins, these were only three people. And the military intelligence, their only crime was that they were trailing them, this kangaroo team, or surveillance. And he said it, the day I will come to power, you, this military intelligence, you have to bury your heads. And true to his word, he buried them. So I feel guilty. He buried them. Where did he bury them? I mean by incarcerating them. He put did them he, in prison. Did he kill some of them? Well, uh, some died. You mentioned Achimota Forest. What happened there? Uh, what happened was that people that uh, they didn't like, they were sending them there to kill, you see. And then we'll be there, and then they'll call us that uh, some soldiers have gone to shoot people there. And then we'll go and see the graves. And then Rolling will say we should keep quiet. Uh, there's another place called uh, Gaddafi Camp by the airport. People were buried there. The last time I went to Ghana, uh, I pretended as if I was a photographer. So I went to the Achimota Forest. Up to today, they haven't done anything because they know what is there. They preserve it. So I saw that they excavated some of the graves. But uh, I know where some of these things are. So the point is I feel guilty that innocent people, not only soldiers, the 260 people who got missing, most of them are there and other places which uh, they know. You see, that doesn't Can mean... Can you tell me some of the other places? Uh, if you are going to the range, mm -hmm. you understand, some of them are there, that uh, Teshi range area. And if you are going to the airport, especially the Air Force boys, they call that place Agege. They were buried there discriminatingly there. You see, those Air Force boys were reckless. Uh, there was even uh, one of them who... He took it into uh, his own uh, accord, and he was shooting. So Rollins made, he, he made a mistake and went and shot somebody who was related to Rollins. And then Rollins told me to go and shoot him. And I said, why? What has he done? It's called uh, W2 Kings, Kingston, Kingston okay. or Kingsley, Kingston. Okay. Okay. So it was one Boachi who went and shot him, uh, called Boachi of Air Force. They went to a funeral. You, you, the killing was just too much. It was uh, what they call uh, collateral. They call it collateral and you call damage. It the holy war? Well, there's nothing called holy, but uh, you can give it any name, unless otherwise uh, you can uh, just uh, brainwash the people like they did to us. So they say it was holy which it wasn't holy. It wasn't only Ashanti's who died or Nordness, it was to die. So it was uh, across board, you see. And so uh, it was a, a sad situation. But the belief was that uh, Amachi, did they say what? Sebebe nye yia. Sebebe nsiya. How do they say? Uh -huh. okay. So if nothing spawn, nothing will become okay. And so for a few people to die for us to get an Ethiopia, whereby there will be milk and honey, uh, I think that uh, that is how we understood it, you see. Unfortunately, it was milk and honey for Rollins, uh, the Ahoys, the Hudu Yayas, and the rest. You can see it today. They have just said and loaded and loaded. What about the Nima people? What that about he, that he talked about? Yes. That he showed you? Yes, they are still the same. When, when you had that opportunity, why, why didn't you ever question him about that? He didn't come. No, uh, when I, we were there and I questioned him, he was saying that uh, it's an ongoing process and it will take time. You see, whether he was right or I was wrong, I don't know. But today we can see the end justify the means. The people are still the same. The Choco people are still the same. But they, they adore him. Yes, because uh, 
excuse me to say, 60% uh, of the population of 50 are semi-literate. They haven't got quality education, so they can't assess. And because of uh, conditions that are not created for them to get jobs and uh, feed their, and their families, uh, the little uh, gare or uh, mm -hmm. what you call milk and sugar they give them, yeah. if you see the trend, when it's getting to election, if you are in the fishing area, you get uh, petrol or adbo motors. In the north, you get bicycle. And then uh, uh, what you call? Would you, ever, would you ever consider running for any governmental position? Uh, no, 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 not at know. all, not at all. You are tired? No. You are fed up? I'm fed up because uh, he came and then uh, lied. And he's still doing it, as I said. You can see that all these head of state, secretly in their heart, they will be telling me, Do you thank you. Do you have any other evidence to pin him down except this book? Yeah, but uh, I'll hold that for now, so that when, uh, because nobody is doing anything about it, like these uh, judges you. and like this uh, gold and the rest. I went to the NRC as I am with you, mm -hmm. and I said everything. And nothing has been done. Yeah, they say okay. they leave it to you, their conscience. They leave it to their conscience. Uh, yeah, Who the, said that? It was uh, the government of Kufo. Okay. When I went to testify and even met them, you see, you see, what exactly do you want to happen to Rollins for you to be at peace? I want him to come like me and apologize and say, yes, we did them. And then we are sorry. And all that money he, he made, he should be prepared to admit. Because I was there and other people who were there, you go and ask those soldiers who were there. Gold was being brought and ferried to, uh, transported to Libya. Patentee sent gold to Libya, he's still alive. Go and ask him. You see, Riyadh, he stole gold and he ran away. Ask him what happened and he came back. He stole gold. During the PNDC era, he went to Australia, ask him. He came when he, this thing. Abdallah, there was one guy called Major Jalut. He was the second command to Gaddafi. He was coming to take the gold. And if nobody wants to investigate, you give it to the treasure hunters, Indiana Jones and his group. They will find where the treasure is. You see? So I want them, him to agree that he came to loot, he and the wife. In fact, I, I cannot hold him because, uh, you see, after 4th June, Rollins was being retired. And when he went and sat home, don't forget that the juice was getting finished, the money. The wife, too, was working at UTC, and they retrench her, and they have a child to take care. So they say, Kai, everybody, let's come back. And that's why they plotted. So, and you can see today, they are among the richest people. Uh -huh. While some of us, not only me, the students who were crying, let the blood flow, and all those people, they were all being So the used. wife was also involved in the whole process? Yes. The wife was involved. Yay. Wicked. You wicked. call her wicked? Very wicked. Why? The bodyguard, 4th June, Rollins like this boy. He's called Anto. You know? Anto. He's a network guy. Rollins knew him when they were playing basketball. That's how he liked him. And he took him to go and guide the wife. 31st, it was the same guy Rollins chose. The wife made them to kill him. Why? I don't know. Maybe you know too much. You know the secret is too much. You see? Mens, it's called mens. Ask this question, what happened? That's why I say she's wicked. So, this uh, in Sawam Canary they are talking about. Go and investigate. How many houses do uh, Achampong have? How many ch uh, houses or cars did Akufo have? How many toilets did Afrifa have? Amedomi and all those people, they kill them for nothing. And today, as you go to a Jigano or Tefle or whatever it is, the rich, count the tallest. How many can roll in sheet inside? And this was why he was telling us. Then we say, hey, hey, hey. you see? So uh, that's why I said that no, he's not fit. Because he say all these things, and then today he, you he, come he and. should do. give everything he has out. Yes. Would you still hold grudge against him? No. And also apologize like I'm doing for 
because uh, that was not meant to be. If on the other hand, it has come out that, oh, for initiating the revolution, you go to Ghana now and see, they have uh, free education, like uh, Akufado is trying to do. And the workers have prefabs or houses. And the uh, economy is, is booming. The, the health system, the education, and uh, whatever. I don't think that uh, Ghanaians would have, uh, they would have forgotten about the few people who died because we, were, we could have compensated them. But you think that would have been the solution? Yeah, because uh, at least some people have to die for things to, why didn't you to ever, succeed. Why didn't you ever fight to be in government with him? Uh, Since he uh, knew he was making a lot of errors. Well, uh, as I said, no, I didn't uh, consider myself uh, to have uh, the dynamics of uh, ruling. I was only good in the shooting and you the weapons. The whole army. Yes, but uh, the, uh, that is... If they have given me maybe a defense minister or a general to command, I would have were been you okay. Not, were you not ever thinking why, when he was mentioning names, your name never came up, but yet you were the one who was sent to call these people to, to come so that they take positions in the government? I was the yeah. one he yeah. asked to go and bring the names. Exactly. And if you ask, Akatapore, one Sergeant Donko Alala, when we were going for him, he ran away. He jumped the window. And when we finished, he now came up and said we should put his name. Rolling just look at him and cancel it. And Father T, he cancel it. All those people who never fought. I, 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 I like I said, no, I didn't fight because I wanted power. power. Based on uh, the assumption that we were going to have uh, a paradise. I was thinking that if everything is okay, I don't need anything, but just to see growth. And up to today, uh, you saw that uh, you met me in Ghana. I was walking alone. Anywhere I go, you see them, they try to threaten me. And I say, look, look at what they are doing. Why don't you just take my life? Because the information is already out. You see, you would rather make me a martyr. They tried to worry me these six months I was there. But then, I don't care because... In my conscience, I, I feel guilty that what we stood for never materialized. It wasn't meant. That is why I didn't take power. Uh -huh. Because there was nothing. Even if I wanted a second command, I would have gotten it. Because I did everything for him, from A to Z. Up to the time, uh, one canal of Osapia from uh, Tubian, he brought troops. That had Makunya Michel them, they were broadcasting. They positioned the mortars at uh, Kanda and they shelled the uh, brokers, the, the zoom in. They were now advancing to the distant Gonda Barras when we crashed them at the 37 runabout. I had a friend, uh, he's called uh, this Isufu. Mm. He was shot just by me. You understand? He was shot. And the guy who shot him is here today, you see. Who is that? It's called uh, Dugan, Captain Dugan, you understand? He was shouting, Dugan is me. Bam. Da, 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 da. So all these things, they haunt me. How do you sleep at night? Well, uh, I try to do my best, you see. Do you hear voices? No, I don't hear voices. But any time, I think that was it worth it. Uh, because like I said, no. Uh, even when I go to Ghana, I drive myself, trotro, and the police, MTT, they stop. And when they are telling me, bring 20, bring, I just say, look, these people, today, somebody who should have been a, a general, uh, you are taking money from me. And uh, they, don't, they never know me, some of them. How they will me, you see? So I feel very, very disappointed, you understand? I comport myself to abide. This, I've been to Ghana two times, last year and last two years. I try to comport myself, but I've seen that no, the situation is more worse than we thought. And so the aim of this interview is to try to, I mean, the youth who were not born. Now they are all advocating that they need change, they need change. Oh, Rollins, like you said, they want. But I am advising them that the consequences is what we got. Uh, uh, what political party do you belong to? Well, uh, I belong to 
MPP. That doesn't mean that it's because <laughs> of MPP I'm doing that. Because someone might be saying you are speaking profoundly of MPP and yet criticizing Rollins. Some of the good works is done, some bad, some good. No, not that. Rollins time. He, do you believe he did anything good in Ghana? Yeah, he, he did some uh, things uh, that good. Like uh, he tried to decentralize uh, the district uh, uh, system. And then uh, I've seen that there are changes. Because even the village I have, I went to Navrungo, my town. I've seen that there are changes there. And you kill Rollins for that? Yeah. You commend him for it? Yes, yes, because at least you could see that uh, uh, so many things, uh, the power have uh, gone down to the district level and the rest. So he has done good things, but then uh, the bad things he has done are more than the good things. That is why. I'm not saying he's a bad man. When he went in exile, uh, he, he, there was this woman called Mrs. Stamakulu. Most of the boys that, uh, because of me, they, and they, they asked me, please, talk to Rollins. I wrote three letters to him to try to give us amnesty for God. These boys want to come home. Mrs. Tamakulo went to and said that Rollins said he will uh, look into it. Uh, another one called uh, Control, the bodyguard, mm -hmm. he went to see Rollins. He said, oh, he said the security services will give us amnesty. You see? Third time, until he lost power. So it was under MPP that I came to Ghana. And because of that, I'm thankful. That's why I'm supporting them. But that doesn't mean if they do wrong, I won't criticize. Because uh, I am for the betterment of Ghana. Would you ever want to meet him again? Rollins. And rekindle your lost friendship? Uh, yes, if he is prepared to... Uh, be honest and sincere and admit the charges I'm leveling against him because I was there. That is why I wanted to meet him Philly Philly. You see, eye to boy to eyeball. I said it at the NRC that Rollins should come and he say he needed a chemical uh, what? Interrogation. Uh, what? He what? Some chemical interrogation, uh, this equipment. Like those things they do in the US, no? Okay. They put those things, whether you are telling lies oh, or no. Okay. You see, okay. And I say, okay, the they should go and bring it. Okay. Lie detector. I say, they should bring it and I'm ready. He never came. Like everybody will see that, uh, yes, Chikata was brave to come. But when we started, 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 they were telling lies. And when I started going at a certain point, they got to know that, no, hey, if they don't stop, this man he will useless us. I understand your campaign. Yeah. For, for the truth to be told. What do you think should happen to him? Well, uh, Because it, it looks like n nothing can happen to him. Yes, nothing can happen to him because, like I'm saying, when Rollins came to power, he took time to break everything down. And then he built it from the grassroots. The boys' company, you see, we, a majority of them has brought him I remember Dominic, I remember Kwesi Bochwe, uh, Isaac Bochwe, I remember a lot of them, half of them, together with Aduma Kunyamichi and the Reiki boys, we brought it. The first official business was to close the boys' company. Then the military intelligence, these were people doing their job. He break them down, he dismantled it, and he built it from the scratch. The special branch, which is now the BNI, he break it down. And so nothing can happen to Rollins because if you go everywhere, he's not in power, but his people are still in power. Whether it's at the airport security, whether it's at uh, the armed forces, two years there was no recruitment. He built all the generals, 90% are Rollins people. The customs, Rollins people. DVLA, Lances of, these are Rollins people. So nobody can do not Rollins anything until you dismantle those things. I'm very, very, very honest with you. He broke everything down and he built it. So that is why nobody can do him anything. He's not in power, but his structures are still in power. You think his structures is hindering the... Yes. Most mm -hmm. of this uh, development, I'm not saying that it's all of them. You understand? If you see his own NDC, which is uh, my testimony, they are trying to do away with him because the man have power. 
uh, but they don't know what to do. So they, they, they are trying to malign him. And like I'm saying that I am not the only one. Go back to history, Victor Smith and uh, whatever, who started with him, the latest editions. They are, today, they are against Rollins. So that is his, uh, uh, what you call his trademark, you understand? His power, 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 and power. Rollins is the almighty. His word is final. Great. When, when, <laughs> his words, and that is what you believe? Yes, according to, uh, because I work with him and I knew it. When I met you in Ghana, um, we had uh, yeah, a very nice chat. I won't disclose the location. However, you send, I mean, it seems that everywhere you are, uh, that, in, you know, it seems to be some sort of danger around. I yes. Had to, I had to increase my own security. <laughs> that is it. Why? Why? Because. Why are you still doing it? A lot of your colleagues have, uh, they say, let the sleeping dogs lie. Yeah. Why do you still want to campaign for it? Not knowing well, nothing can happen to him. Yes, because I, I'm guilty. Like I said, no, I have blood in my hands. So these people, whether directly or indirectly, they are forcing me to say things. Who are forcing you? Like uh, those people who have lost their lives through my indirect Action. actions. They are forcing me. It's like something is forcing me that look. You started this thing, so you must fight for us. We know you are not guilty. That was not meant to be. So continue. Uh, everywhere I go, that day you saw that uh, it was not easy for me. Yeah, it was quite a yeah, heavy yeah. atmosphere. Yeah, they came uh, there. Sure, people that I was there, and uh, they knew very well that they are implicated in some of these things. They sent them to come and uh, cool me down. I go to the beaches. Oh, the, the last time even they, they trapped me was uh, when you came to town. Yeah. Uh, I was in the beach and I, uh, after swimming, you know, I uh, like good time. So I saw these girls who were chatting. No knowing that these uh, girls, they set me up. And then when I was going, you know, <laughs> before I reached my place, police, two cars with a backup, they collected my back. They searched and they searched and they searched. They couldn't get anything. And they were still searching. Things I were even buying for no way. The toilet through, they dismantle it. The coffee, they remove it. Bah, Milo, bah. They open everything. So when they finish, I ask the officer, why? Why, why me? Why this? They say, you know, we are acting on uh, this thing, information. It means, then I look back and say, huh, those girls, they set them on me. But uh, what they were looking for, I don't know. So they, 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 they try me a lot of, a uh, couple of times to harass me. But I've seen that. The more they do that, the more I come. Because the only thing you can do is to take my life. Is that what you, what you, wanted, uh, what you want to happen to you? Yes, if that will uh, appease the people who have died. Would you, what about your family? Well, my family, uh, God uh, being uh, so good, I brought uh, some to Norway. And uh, home, like I said, no. Uh, they, from day one, they knew I was fighting and I was going to die. Like I said, no, I, I didn't just uh, start 31st, but the June 19th, you see, I spearheaded it. And then the, this in the G war operation, the Goka brothers. My family knew that I, uh, in the process I can lose my life. But Nobody stopped you? No, because they knew where I come from. Uh, my bean power, I shouldn't say my bean. Really? <laughs> I'll tell you. My bean to say, you nana. Uh, <laughs> Yes, and is that is that why you were sh almost shot twice? Then? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, I didn't go where I come from. Maybe now they they this thing. over the years because of uh, vi social vices. They, those things are limited. But those times, Rollins said no. When the bullets are coming, you see me charging, and that is why I say that you fear me. You no, know? at Air Force there, I was charging with Jiwa. There's another one called Ajekum. Who were the three generals, you understand, who led with all these Reiki boys. In fact, they did, uh, some of them did good jobs. But uh, when they were looking up to us to give the go ahead that uh, let's move, especially the time I hands up him when he said we should run away. Because he told us uh, Le Mans was involved, you asked us to start this thing. So if we had given out, they would have shot us. That is the truth. So let's see the action, even if we die in battle. At least we have uh, this uh, honor. They will give us at least the bigel. 
last post. So that is why my family, they know I've been to Lamakara, they know I've been to this thing. Burkina Faso before. In fact, uh, before we even started the revolution, I told Ole he should let me go and say goodbye to my mother. And then after that, I went and fortified myself. You understand? So I, I believe that uh, these things helped me. What do you do for a living now? Well, I'm working with an NGO. Okay. In Norway. Okay. Yes, helping immigrants. And then uh, I'm trying to establish uh, this uh, trotro business in Ghana. I have also an NGO there, uh, people uh, who have lost their parents, orphanage and this. So I'm just trying to do that and uh, help. So in about three months, uh, I hope to go back and see that uh, this uh, trotro business is running. So that is what I'm trying to do. I'm ever thankful for your time. Thank you very uh, much. It was an honor meeting you in Ghana. My pleasure, sir. <laughs> Through all the battles, we survived. Uh, yes, <laughs> yeah, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> you, should, you, should, you should actually advise me next time when we're meeting that I need to double my security. Yes. Yeah, because it was quite a... Yeah, tense. A heavy, very, very. Heavy yes, <laughs> that's true. Yeah, 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 yeah. We but, have to. But I think, yeah, um, Nanez government is doing quite well. And I'm yes. sure... Have you been invited? Uh, no, but uh, at least by giving me that uh, atmosphere to establish my business, which is uh, transport, Okay. Uh, what we call foreign direct investment. If I can also contribute my quota, I think that uh, it will be okay. And uh, I encourage some of my colleagues to do that. Do your little part. And if the government say, come and work with us, it's okay. But don't wait for the government to come and uh, say, come and we'll give you this. Would you stop the campaign against Rollins? Well, I will never stop till uh, <laughs> he come out to apologize <laughs> and admit to his crimes. You are indeed a general. Thank you very never, much, sir. Never Thank you. stop in battle. Yes, sir. Well, you heard it all from the man, Mr. Matthew Adibuga. I call him the general, the man. Um, he's told us a lot today, but you will be having more of his story in his book, Murder, Rollins, Murder and His Lies, uh, which will be very, uh, uh, will be available very soon online and on our website. Um, that's the book, so stay tuned for it. And join us same time next week. Thank you and goodbye. My pleasure, sir. Thank you.